As The Rock would say, finally, the Dexter Refuse have returned to Fog Entertainment. And with that comes the killings, with that comes the blood, and everything else good with Dexter. Welcome back, guys, to the channel. We are here today to review Season 3, Episode 1 of Dexter. This one is called Our Father. It's been a while since we watched Episode 12 of Season 2, and it's also been a while in Dexter time since that actually happened, as it's been a year since the passing of the deaths of Sergeant James Dokes and Lila West. So we've got a bit of a time skip here going into Season 3. How many people has Dexter killed in that amount of time? We don't know, but the episode starts with him at the dentist. He's receiving a temporary crown. It's kind of funny because the dentist is talking to Dexter as if he's a little kid. Oh, did you have a nice summer? And Dexter is just uh, recounting basically all the things that he's done, all the people that he's killed, and he's talking about going to the carnival and winning a prize, and I'm sure the whole time the dentist is like, what the hell is this big man-child on about? And the prize that Dexter is talking about is one of his new victims, Cal Rooney, that uh, we didn't get to see, but Dexter did kill him off-screen at the carnival, so yeah, Dexter, I'm pretty sure he had a good time. He did, he's got a few more slides as well in his new box that was hoovered off in the old box, sadly, in season two, but I'm glad that they've distinguished that there has been a year time skip. I hate when TV shows just, they bring you back and you've no idea where you are in the timeline. I like the fact they've pointed this out. Yeah, I think it's good. So, uh, we start, we see Dexter, it just seems to be fitting in to his new life with Rita. All that talk about him potentially handing himself in at the end of season two, I'm sure he's glad he didn't do that. Because nope. he wouldn't be having this good life now. And he seems to be basically... Living a normal life outside of the killings, obviously. He, obviously, that's not what a normal person does. But Dexter, aside from that, seems to be doing good. Uh, he gets offered, or asked, should I say, to go to Dad Day by Cody. So, I mean, Dexter really is fitting into this little family. But it's time for Dexter to do what he does best. And that is find his next victim, which is going to be a guy called Freebo. He goes by the name of Fred Bowman. He's killed two female college students before. He got off with it but he ain't going to get off with Dexter. So Dexter going to make sure that he takes him out. We see Dexter with his donut tradition where he takes the donuts into the, the department. And it looks like we have a, a new member, a new detective, Joey Quinn. Is he coming in to replace Dokes? He might not be taking Dokes' position, but maybe we need somebody else in there now that Dokes is gone. So what was your thoughts on Joey? He didn't really feature that much. He was, he was like, all right. I can't. He looks, he looks like he'll be a decent level character. He's got a bit of charisma. Yeah, he, he compliments Deborah on the new hairstyle who was rocking this shorter haircut, so Dexter didn't notice that. Deborah was pretty pissed. Yeah, I mean, how could you not notice it? It's your sister, man. You should, you know, you should, you should, you should, you should have noticed this, but when you're too busy killing people, I can see why it would go under your nose. Yes, now, Deborah wants to meet Dexter tonight at the, the Blue Room, which is, I guess, a police bar. They want to celebrate their dad's birthday, but I mean, it kind of turns out that Dexter isn't really interested in that. He's moved past Father John. He's moved past Aye, Brother uh, John, Father John, John Cena, Harry Morgan. He's went down the pecking order in Dexter's worshipping list. I wouldn't yeah. say there's many people even on that anymore. Yeah. Um, Maria gives Batista a promotion, so now he is officially taking Dokes' job. you got to feel bad for Dokes here. I mean, not only was the guy painted as the Bay Harbor Butcher, he's also dead, and no one really seems, is to, be, it, is no one seems to be mourning him either, and it's like he's just been replaced. No, no, not even a mention of him. I mean, yeah, the Bay Harbor Butcher got mentioned, but it's bizarre to think that that's what happened to Dokes, but I'm sure when it all ends, Dokes' name will probably be, he'll be a hero at one point in this Can show. we get Dokes' name in the clear? Can someone, can someone revive Dokes? Can someone... Uh, oh, get a, a million bit. bits to get well, refined. Yes. Well, can someone at least give him justice? Maybe, maybe we will. We will see that. But yeah, uh, Angel is going to get promoted. Dexter then shows up at Freebo's place. He's pretending to be a junkie. So that works for Dexter, I guess. He's like, right, I'm going to pretend to be a junkie. Freebo will want to sell me gear. I will get gear, and that works out fine. He goes in. Freebo stoned at his head. Uh, he's playing video games on a TV that costs six grand. He tries to sell it to Dexter for free, but Dexter's like, nah, I'm just here for the Do you know this is, Do you know this is much of a, like, a 2000s gimmick where TVs cost this much? 
Like, I'm not saying the TV wasn't good, but I think you'd expect to get a TV what this guy had here for about 600 these days. Yeah. Six grand on that TV just shows you, though. Yeah, I'm That's not... my biggest takeaway. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Deborah gets confronted by some Asian woman. I believe she's called Yuki. Uh, she's from Internal Affairs, and she wants dirt on Joey Quinn. She's trying to bring Joey down, but Deborah, I guess, refuses to be a rat. She says that you obviously don't know me. Go find somebody else. So, what is Joey guilty of? What's Joey done? Internal well, affairs are after him. Uh, will Deborah turn on Joey? Uh, we don't really know. But Dexter then plans that they kill him for free ball. He gets it all set out. There was a, a drugs raid at a house not far away. So he's got this clear. He's got this free room where he's going to take free ball. He later visits Freebo that night, but unfortunately for him, there is somebody else <laughs> already after Freebo, and this guy is in a, a struggle with Freebo. Dexter then comes in, interrupts the whole thing. Uh, Freebo manages to somehow run out the house and escape. The man attacking Freebo then tries to attack Dexter with some sort of like blade. Dexter overpowers him, stabs him, and kills him. But then Dexter realises, holy shit, that he has just killed the wrong person. Perhaps an innocent person. He's broken Harry's code. It's the first time Dexter's ever killed someone that he didn't mean to kill. And he's killed someone that, you know, wasn't worthy. Didn't fit the, the Harry code, so to speak. And I think it... I, feel, I don't know. I wouldn't go as far as saying Dexter feels bad about it. But he's obviously not happy that he's killed someone that didn't deserve it. No, the code is dismantled. So he, he runs down to the kill room and he dismantles that because obviously Freebo is not there. Freebo has escaped and Dexter then basically just goes and reunites with Rita knowing that tomorrow he's going to get the phone call and he's going to have to go and uh, look at the crime scene that he caused. Yeah, and he has to look at it the next morning. I mean, Batista phones him, he says, I'll be there in half an hour. When he's actually he's scoping it, he's right there. 30 minutes, give me 30 seconds, you know, so Dexter could have got there straight away. Um, he does get there, there's lots of people in this um, in this kill room, and it turns out the man he killed is Oscar Prado, who is well known, I guess, in the, I don't know, what would you call it, like law enforcement? He's DA. Because his brother is Assistant District Attorney Miguel Prado, and his other brother is Sheriff Lieutenant Raman Prado. So this guy is obviously pretty high here. He, he, he's got a good family. He's, he's got he is pretty high as well, isn't he? He's got an important family, and, and Dexter's like, ah, shit. So not only has Dexter killed someone he didn't mean to, he's killed someone with at least important family members. And we get introduced to, obviously, Miguel Prado, who is played by Jimmy Smith, who we're a big fan of on this channel, obviously. A lot of Son stuff. Sons of Anarchy, legend for me. Nero, uh, easily, 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 undoubtedly the best character to come out of the second part of the show. We always talk about the show is split into two parts. Yep. Uh, no one, in my opinion, comes close to Nero. He's in a lot of other stuff, though. No, he is, but He's in Star Wars. Um, that's plenty. That's plenty. Let's move on. Yeah, so um, Dexter um, and has to go over it. Miguel Prado is obviously feeling guilt, and Dexter's trying to console him. And Dexter then later tries to find out a little bit of information about Oscar Prado. He does a little bit of searching on the database, which turns out to be a mistake because Miguel Prado finds this out, I guess. He, I, I'm assuming he's got. He's got ties in it with everything. It is sloppy for Dexter. Yeah, so he's he confronts Dexter and is like, why were you trying to search for my brother on the database? Why were you looking into it? Like, what is up with this? Maybe Miguel thinks there's something dodgy going on here. And Dexter just tries to play it out as, you know, he was just upset that, a, I guess, a fellow law enforcement member uh, was murdered and he was trying to make sense of it to see what reason this would be, why it would happen so to speak, so, um, yeah, Oscar Prado, he might not have been innocent, he might not have been perfect, but I, he, de he definitely didn't fit the code, he didn't fit Dexter's code here. Maybe yeah, I mean, a lot of people do drugs, so I don't think killing somebody because they're a junkie makes it justified. I mean, if Dexter had to kill all the junkies, I mean, he'd be killing a lot of people in America, so. Yeah. Uh, Dexter then goes to Cody's school, Dad's Day thing, he's, he's trying to show the kids about 
his, his job, his blood splatter job, but they're not really interested. They want to see if he has a cool uniform. He doesn't. He only wears like some sort of cloak. Lab coat. Yeah, uh, they want to know if he's a cool badge. He's like, actually, that's a limb in it. So yeah, Dexter here not making a big impression on the kids. Nope, he's, he can be good with kids sometimes, but here his awkwardness does creep in. Like, he literally explains the job to a T for a bunch of seven-year-olds, which is not the correct way to go about it. Which he shouldn't have done, but here, Cody still likes him. Then he, then he looks at Cody and it's like, it goes in slow motion. There was one kid who... No, was about a troubled upbringing, about a fatherless figure. It's this kid. Yeah, so um, Joey gives Debra a little bit of information on one of his... I'm not even sure what you call them. CI. CI. So she goes and visits him and learns a little bit of information about Freebo, a little bit more information uh, about Oscar Prado and the fact that he was a junkie. She comes back to the station and she reveals this in her loudmouth ways, but unfortunately for her, Miguel is walking in and it's He's not a good sign. fucking junk. Uh, Miguel does a 180, he's like, ah, fuck this. Uh, LaGuerta's not happy. And she basically puts... Um, she basically puts Chris, up Batista ah. to take Deborah off the case. It's a joke, alright? We're going to make a separate vid on this, put it up for a poll. But why? If Miguel doesn't have a fucking problem with it, then why is LaGuerta taking obsession to it? I don't understand. Like, seriously? Like... <laughs> here, I like the show, but it almost feels forced. That like here yeah, we've got to create a bit of tension in this whole police group here to get Deborah off the. I don't think but here it happens all the time. I guess it's not just the. I, I get why it's being done, but it just feels petty and pathetic. Oh, eh, he's the one that got away. You can't be mean to him. You can't call his brother a junkie, even though he was, and even though he's all right with it. His brother's dead. There's bigger fish to fucking fry than him. You know, smoking weed or injecting meth. Come on, Nagata, know your role. <laughs> This is the same fucking woman, though, that slept around with the guy for last season just to get the other person out of the fucking job. Yeah, then dumped him as soon as she got her job back. Cunt. Uh, Dexter then attends Oscar's wake. He gets asked some weird questions. Did you know him well? And <laughs> Dexter's like, not as good as I thought I did. Would you like a burrito, I say. Uh, Deborah, meanwhile, is, is drinking in the, the blue room herself. Obviously, wanted to celebrate her father's birthday with Dexter, but he isn't there. Batista then turns up instead and he basically gives her the bad news that she's no longer off the case and he tells her that the only person stopping her from getting her detective badge is herself and Deborah at this point decides she wants to ditch the the cranberry juice because fuck it she's been taken off the case may, may as well have a real drink and Batista's going to be paying since he's the he's the man with the pay the pay grade now he's got a good pay rise so um that happens Dexter still continuing to uh, live his life. Um, Dexter then eventually tells Deborah that he likes her haircut. So I mean, I guess that's <laughs> finally got around. Uh, Deborah's a wee bit happier about that. Um, when <laughs> when Batista finally gets his promotion, Deborah refers to him as an asshole, and he's like, "What do you call me?" And she went, "Oh, sorry, Sergeant Arsehole." Um, pretty funny. Uh, is Batista the right man for this job? Is he the right man to replace Dokes? I, I would say so. If everyone, yes, because who else is going to do it? There's no one else we know. I mean, Dexter and Masuka or, or Basuka, whatever his fucking name is. They're not even, they're, not, they're just blood Basuka, guys. Basuka, that Farouk. And they're not going to get to Deborah. Uh, we see Yuki again pressurising Deborah for more information on Quinn, but Deborah is refusing to cooperate, saying that. Her, they're, they're more than co-workers, they're more than just bad num badge numbers, they're her friends. And uh, Yuki then threatens Deborah's attempt at earning a detective shield, saying that, you know, basically if she gives up Joey, this could help her get it. And that she could be doing herself long-term damage by uh, by not playing by, by the dodgy rules, so to speak. And then we finish the episode with uh, Rita... Craving chocolate pudding, and she tells Dexter that she's had this feeling before, she knows what's happening, and she's pregnant. And that is pretty much it. Dexter doesn't know what to do. And there was also a scene before this where they find another dead body. It's a female, and it turns out to be the female that was in Freebo's house when Dexter first turned up to buy the drugs. So therefore, Dexter realizes that Freebo is still in town and that he is going to be able to get his kill. You're just gonna have to wait until episode two, probably, until that happens. And that's it, guys. That was it. That was your uh, season premiere there for Dexter, episode one, season three, Our Father. Uh, looks like Deborah's still feeling 
the I don't know the the, the hole that Harry Morgan left, but Dexter, I I don't think after season two, he seems to be moving on. He's like, fuck it, I don't want Harry Morgan. I don't need Harry I don't Morgan need anymore. John, but uh, what he needs is a rating, and I, I'll give it a I'll give it a seven. Thought it introduced the season pretty well, set up pretty much for the direct. This season's going to be with. Jimmy Smith's taking a focal point with yep. his dead brother. That is, that's my rating as well. So uh, a seven out of ten for me. I uh, get to see Jimmy Smith. I think Joey's a, a decent character, but we didn't really get to see much of him. It's but not to expect though, because when you do a year time skip, you can't just have an all out episode one because a lot, a lot of what happened in season two is done. It's simmered, it's done. So you can't expect an explosive episode one of a year time skip for me. No, definitely so not. Did it right. So, yeah, that is, that's pretty much it, guys. We will catch you in the next one. We're giving us a 7 out of 10. Let us know your thoughts down below. And, of course, until next time, we'll be in Fog Entertainment. Fairy Fids are going to come, so make sure you check out the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.